Hello everyone. I've been working on the next software update for the AR4. So this is software version 2. Um, in this software version there's a few things I've added. Um, first of all the screen size is larger. I've increased the screen size and changed the button layout to clean things up a little bit. I've also added a spline functionality, a two-stage calibration, and cleaned up some of the error messages a little bit. So I'll go over the two-stage calibration and the error messages last, and I'll start out with the spline functionality. So basically what spline functionality does, you can see here in this test program I've already put together, I've got a start spline and an end spline, and in between those I can put in a series of move L's or linear moves. And what start spline does is it does a look ahead. It starts reading ahead and jumps through and reads these uh, move L's in um, ahead of time so that it can um, calculate where it's going ahead of time. So it can do a, a much faster um, calculation on the moves. And then you'll also notice here on the moves L's, um, I have a rounding value, which is up here in this field. So by default, it's zero. Um, but what rounding is, um, it's also known as zone um, on some robots or known as continuous on other robots. Um, but what this is, is that when the robot gets within however many millimeters of the point, it's going to start redirecting or arcing um, or, or rounding, so to speak, to the next move. Um, so you can see here, um, I've got the start spline and let me... Let me do another, uh, let me pull up a blank program here. So from the move dropdown, I can select start spline and add that position. And then I can add my move L and I can teach a position. And you can see here the rounding is zero. If I wanted it to start rounding, let's say 10 millimeters uh, before it gets to its position and start heading for the next move, I could put in a 10 and then teach a position, you can see the rounding value would be 10. And so um, every time I teach another linear move, before it actually gets to that point, it's gonna round and start heading to the, to the next position. And then when I'm done with my spline, I'm gonna wanna select um, end spline, and then add that end spline um, to the end of my move there. So I'm gonna reload in my program that I already created. I'll load that in. So I've already got the robot in position here at this first uh, move. And when I hit play, it's going to hit the start spline uh, command, and then it's going to start reading ahead. It's going to jump through these moves quickly, and it's going to run a zigzag pattern. So right now I have the rounding at zero. So this is just an example to show you um, what the zigzag pattern looks like with no rounding. These are going to be sharp uh, corners at each of the... Uh, each time the robot changes direction. So you can see each of the points there are a, uh, a sharp point. So now if we go into the program, I'm going to hit um, get selected on that move and I'm going to change the rounding value to a 10. And I'll go ahead and do that for all of the moves. Okay, so you can see that I've changed the rounding value um, from 0 to 10 on all of these. And I didn't bother changing the last move because the last move obviously is not going to do any rounding. It's not going to, it doesn't have another move or another position to go to. So I've only changed the rounding value for the first, um, for the first set of moves in the zigzag pattern. So I'll hit play on that. And you can see that when it gets to each of the um, each of the points, it's now rounding those points off. So now it's not a sharp corner anymore. It's it's 10 millimeters before it gets to um, one of the points. It starts redirecting or curving towards the next point. So now let's do an example with a rounding value at 20. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to change the uh, the rounding value to 20. Okay, so now you can see that I've changed the rounding value to 20 on um, each of these moves. And so when we hit play on that, you can see that the robot now 
is doing a larger arc at each of the points in the zigzag pattern. And so I'll do one more example. I'll change these to 40 just so you can see what a larger rounding value looks like. Okay, so now I have each of the rounding points uh, changed to 40. So we'll play that and you can see what that looks like. You can see the, the larger sweeping arc that it does uh, with the rounding um, set at a value of 40 millimeters. So that is the uh, that is the spline functionality with look ahead. That's only used with move L's. So you only want to have uh, move L's um, placed between a spline start and a spline end. Um, if you are not running a spline, it just ignores the rounding value when you execute a regular move L. The other thing we've added in the software is a two-stage calibration. So if we go to the config setting tab. Um, Previously, there was only one set of checkboxes for each of the joints. Now you'll see that there's two set of checkboxes. So previously, if you wanted to calibrate all the joints, you would select all of the um, checkboxes and um, all joints would be calibrated when you hit auto, auto calibrate. Um, you can see here on the robot, I've got this pen holder attached, um, which is um, a good example of why we might want a two stage calibration because with a larger end of arm tool, the um, tube would hit the J2 arm when it goes to calibrate. So um, in this case, I do not want to calibrate joint five because I don't want the wrist to move and cause that interference. And also on this pen holder, um, I'm not using joint six. This pen holder is, is a round tool and I don't have uh, my grippers removed. So I don't have a, a, a tab to hit the uh, limit switch. So I'm not going to calibrate joint six either. Um, so what I want the robot to do is when I hit auto calibrate, I want it to calibrate joints one, two, three, and four, and then it's going to come back home and then it's going to do the second stage calibration second. So in this case, I want it to do joint five only uh, on the second stage of calibration. So after changing these, I need to hit save. And then when I hit auto calibrate, you can see it's going to behave um, the way that it normally would and that it goes to do the calibration, but you notice joint five and six are not calibrating. So it'll finish that calibration. And then when the robot gets back to the home position, now it's going to execute the second, um, stage in the calibration. It'll calibrate joint five second. So that is the, uh, two stage calibration and, um, it says auto calibration stage two successful. Uh, it'll say that for each stage and that'll also be in the log. Um, the other thing I've added or I've changed, I've, I've been cleaning up the, um, the messages. And so if we, for example, do the test limit switches program and load that program and we hit play on that, you'll notice that I no longer have the output up here in the message. I have it, I put it down here in the manual program entry. So um, it's functionality is exactly the same. I've just moved it into the program entry field. So you can see if I hit the J1 limit switch, you can see that each time I depress the button, the, the value changes there. Um, so you can still test all the limit switches the same and the encoders program uh, is the same. It puts the value for the encoders down here into the uh, manual program entry field, but functionality is still all the same. So I have this new version of software on the website. Um, so please try it out and send me emails if you find any issues or bugs with it. And thanks for watching.